And now, tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, the story of a man who killed and a woman who helped him try to get away with it. It's called Run, Sheep, Run. Our stars, Kathy and Elliot Lewis. I just want I'm going to kill you. Now, Hazel, why do you always say that? I am. One of these days, I'm... Hazel, I'm... honey, it's the fog. I'm in a gas station now, just below Redondo. The fog's been so You're thick... doing it again, fabricating. Honey... Making up stories. Fog. Why don't you say hail or some other terrible storm of nature? Typhoon and be done with it. Fog. And here it's as clear as crystal. Honey, Hazel... Who you got there with you? How many girls? Now, Hazel, you, you know... get home, that's all. All right, the fog's lifting a little. I'll try to chance it now. But it's been so heavy, honest, I thought I'd better pull up by the side of... Honey? Hazel, honey? Hazel? Oh, Hazel. Hazel. She's a fine girl, a good wife, a good cook, runs a neat, clean home for me, but she's got one fault, a nagger. Another thing, always telling me I make up stories. A guy works eight hours a day on the steel lathe in an aircraft factory in El Segundo. How much energy has he got left to make up stories to his wife? Like about the fog, for instance. What's there to make up? Fog hits the coast of Southern California regular like clockwork this time of the year. Like right now, it's got a kind of gray-white color, and it curls in real slow from the ocean, and it stops up the traffic. And from far away, over the honking of the automobiles, you can hear the foghorns out to sea, and the ships, the freighters, and the steamers. A very musical sound, far away sound. And it reminds a guy of things, like your ship hits a port of call, and you lean over the rail and look out, and in the fog there's a face waiting for you, just for you. Warm, beautiful, and shiny. Another thing, I'm a singer. I drive in my car, I like to sing. Her face was very beautiful. My headlights hit it just right, no mistake, not the fog, not the mood, a very stunning face, and the smile sweet. And she was standing a little way in the street, holding up her thumb for a ride. Hi. Ride? Ride with me? Sure, hop in. Thank you. Thank you ever so much. Don't mention it. <laughs> what? I like to. Oh? I like the fog and the feeling of being lost in it. You do? Oh, yeah. yeah. If I were a thousand miles away from anything and anyone. Nice feeling. Exciting. Secret and exciting. How come... A, yeah? A girl like you, how come you have to... I mean... You mean why I was hitching a ride? A girl like you? My car stalled about a half mile back and I was alone. I don't know anything about cars. So I just left it there and started to walk and... Then I remembered my thumb. I just held it up. But somebody like you, what I mean is it could be dangerous getting a lift from just anybody, get in some stranger's car and not know what kind of... You'd worry about me. Well, yes. Yes, I would. Gallant. Well, it's just... Gallant. And a gentleman. Well, it's just if I knew anyone like you, I'd worry I about... like you. You headed for Long Beach? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. You get to that stop sign up ahead, turn left. Why? Coast Highway will take us right in for well, Maybe it won't be as crowded as the Coast Highway. Maybe not so foggy. Maybe it is a little out of the way. Maybe it'll take longer, but... Left? Just up ahead? Yeah. I live in Long Beach. Work in El Segundo. Make the drive every morning and night. I live in Long Beach. Where do you... What's your name? Joe. Joe Haywood. Mine's Roberta. Roberta. Roberta what? Just Roberta. 
call me Bobby if you want. No. I like Roberta. I like I can be driving through the fog and see a lovely... and see her and stop so that I can help out a girl whose name is Roberta. In shining armor. Through banners of mist and shining armor. My wife's name's Hazel. Joe and Hazel. Joe and Roberta. Joe and... <laughs> it's bumpy. Rough. Yeah. I told you maybe it'd take us longer. Fog's just as heavy. Heavier. Mm. Watch out. Joe! Joe! What? What's the matter? You hit someone. You hit him and and ran over him. What are you talking about? I just... You, you didn't see it, Joe. The fog and you were looking at me. You mean it? You mean I hit someone? Oh. You better get out of the car. Take a look. Yeah. Maybe I better. Oh. Joe? Like you said, I hit a man. I ran over him. Oh, Joe. He's dead. Sure, Joe, you, you know, sometimes a quick look like that, you can't. You sure? Oh, sure, I killed him. Joe? What? What's going to happen to you? What happens now? I don't know. Just keep quiet a minute, huh? Sure. Roberta. A nice person like you, a really wonderful person, to get mixed up in a thing like this. And, and police. And what do you tell them? How you were riding along singing and looking at me and manslaughter. That's what they'll do to you. Oh, Joe. Roberta, Roberta don't do that. You worried? You worried about me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Listen. Listen, Roberta. Just listen to me. It's trouble. That's terrible trouble. Yeah, trouble, and I don't know what to do. A thing like this never happens. To me. Never. I'm all mixed up. Let's get away from here. Let's just I killed away. a man. Let's, let's get away from you here. You hear me? It's never happened. Please let us get away from I here. I just killed a man. I won't tell. Honest, I won't tell. I'd never tell Joe. Joe, we can't just sit here. Please. 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 All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I don't know too much about things like this, so I can't explain not exactly what it feels like to kill a man. And I can't explain not exactly what it felt like to hear her sobbing, the girl whose name was just Roberta, and the way she leaned her head against my shoulder and sat close and shivered, and then was quiet, real quiet, and not moving away from me, just staring straight into the fog. I kept driving, is all I know, like it was some mechanical reflex. I got back on the coast highway and kept driving past where I live, past Long Beach, past Seal Beach, past Balboa, south, just outside Laguna. The fog started to lift. Joe. It's okay. We're a long way from... You okay? Yeah. And you? I'm okay. Where are we? Just outside of Laguna. Keep your eye on the rear view mirror, will you, Roberta? What? The car just behind picked me up outside Balboa. I think he's been following me. Maybe. I don't know any way to tell for sure. I know a way. There's a place just up ahead, cocktail bar, parking lot. I'll turn in there. <laughs> I guess I'm just jumpy and scared. Very scared, I don't mind saying. Joe, as long as we're here, could yeah, we have... Yeah, as long as we're here, a drink would help relax me. Let me think instead of being all knotted up inside. You want to? Yeah, yeah. It was a place Hazel and I used to go to a lot before we were married. That kind of place. 
jutting out over the ocean and a glass wall to look through at whatever horizon you had in mind that evening. Candles and wrought iron on every table and piano music. And the sound of the ocean washing against the beach and the place swaying with the tides rolling in from the South Pacific. About a place like that, I can talk like that. We found a table close to the glass wall, and I asked Roberta to order for me, and I asked her to excuse me for just a minute as I had a phone call to make. Operator. I want Terminal 21476 in Long Beach, operator. One moment, please. That'll be 1510, please. Yes, ma'am. I'll ring your number. Hello? It's Joe, honey. You better be calling from a hospital is what I've got to say to you. Just listen, will you? Something happened. A broken I... leg? Two broken legs? What? What happened to you, Will Joe? you just listen to me? Or maybe you got mixed up in some gambling parlor and you don't dare show your face back home because you lost every penny you ever had. The house, the car. Honest, honey, it's nothing like that. It's Gambler. a Gambler. Oh. I'm sorry, sir. I thought I recognized your young lady. I was wrong. That's right. He, he thought he recognized me. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Now, be a good chap. Take my word for it. Huh? Her word, too. I'm very sorry. Good night, lady. Good night, sir. Hey, now you just wait That's a minute. what happened, Joe. Honest. He thought he knew me. I was setting him right when you... Come on. Come on, sit down. I've been waiting... I waited to drink with you, Joe and Roberta. Joe and Roberta. We drank our drink, and I ordered another one, and we drank that. Not a whole lot of talk. Sat and looked at the ocean. And in a while, the clouds over the water moved away to some other country, some other ocean. And there was left the moon. People often remark how nice I talk about pretty things. But there was no talk that night. Anyway, hardly any talk at all. Just the music from the piano and another drink. And not think what happened way back there outside of Redondo. Not say it. I guess I must have looked at Roberta in some way that... We better go. Not yet. We better. Come on, Joe. Please. Yeah, I better. So I called over the waiter and paid him and gave him a very nice large tip. And we went outside. And in the parking lot, I saw something. What's the matter? Why are you stopped? That, that car parked there. What about it? It's just like the car I thought was following me. Exactly the same car. I swear. You better let me drive, Joe. Hmm? Maybe you got too relaxed in those drinks. Maybe it'd be better if I drove. Give me the keys, huh, Joe? Come on. Yeah, it'll be better. You drive. Here are my keys. Roberta, Roberta. I'll help you in, Joe. Roberta, Roberta. I'm sorry for for what I got you into and for being kind of loaded the way I am. Oh, now, you just put your head on my shoulder. Don't think of anything. Oh. Any traffic accidents throughout the Southwest. California State Highway Patrol reports that a short while ago, a man was found dead on Vernon Avenue outside Redondo. As yet, he is unidentified. But he is a victim of a hit-and-run driver. The Highway Patrol has asked that this announcement be made so that any person or persons who may have seen the accident will immediately... Roberta, they mean me. They... Maybe. What am I going to do? What? But you heard it, Phil. For sure. What Sleep. I... That's what you're going to do. Sleep. Close your eyes and nestle close and sleep. Sleep, Joe. Yeah, maybe. So my hell clear. Uh... Sleep. 
that. listening to Kathy and Elliot Lewis in Martin Fine and David Friedkin's story, Run, Sheep, Run. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tomorrow night, CBS Radio's 21st Precinct Thriller begins in the early morning hours when a woman approaches a cop on his beat and announces... I just shot my husband. It's another poignant story of Captain Kennelly's 21st Precinct, titled The Shotgun, one that will touch your heartstrings. Hear it on most of these same stations tomorrow night for another revealing insight on the human element in police work. And now we bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Kathy and Elliot Lewis in Mr. Lewis's production of Run, Sheep, Run, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Oh, you old sleepy. Oh. Uh, don't, don't think about it. Where are we? Just south of San Diego. We'll be in National City in a little while. You know what I did? I don't want you to think about I it. I killed a man. For my sake, don't. And I'm running away. Look. What? Over there, the sun's coming up. See? It's the start of my first day as a fugitive. It's... Honey. Honey? Of course it's honey. What we've been through together, what we... Oh, just a minute. What? Everything seems different. It's a new day, and my mind's refreshed. I don't know what you're talking about. A new about. perspective. Everything's terrible. Well, honey, everything was terrible last but night. But in the light of a new day, listen, I've killed a man, and I'm running away from it. That's right. Joe Haywood murderer. Joe Haywood murderer. I don't think about it. In Mexico. In Mexico? Have you ever dreamed of Mexico, Joe? Very often. In an hour. Mexico. With me. Last night. I don't know what happened to me, seeing that poor man lying there. I guess it was shock. What made me do? Joe, Mexico. With me, Joe. I must have been out of my mind. First, there was a girl out of the fog. Me, Joe, and I'm beside you now, and... What are you shaking your head for? Am I not pretty anymore in the morning? You're beautiful. Well, then what? Stop the car. What? Quick, stop the car. What? I'm going to make a telephone call. That phone booth in the filling station. Who are you going to call? Hazel. You know I'm going to call Hazel. She's my wife. I've just got to call her. I'm going to tell her everything. How I killed a man. Operator, your number, please. I want Terminal 21476 in Long Beach, operator. That will be 45 cents for the first three minutes. Yes, ma'am. And a quarter. Thank you. Just a moment. Joe? Joe, where are you? I'm coming in, Hazel. I'm going to give myself up. Joe, are you all right? I'm going to face the music, Hazel. Face what music? What are you talking about? It's a long story, Hazel, what's happened to me and the strangeness of events leading up to... You drunken bum. Hazel, listen to me. What's that music playing? And who are those girls I hear laughing at? There's no music. Chorus girl, I'll bet you. And wine and whiskey. Joe? You hear me, Joe? Hazel, please. Don't come home. Don't ever come home. Now, don't say that, baby doll. Hazel? Hazel? Oh... Well, look at me, Joe. Now you come on and look at me. That's better. You certainly are a changed person in the morning, you know that? Anybody ever told you that? You know something? I don't understand you at all. 
I'm glad, Joe. A little mystery in a woman. Roberta, my wife is really worried about me. Roberta, we're going back. What? We're going back. And you'll testify... Oh, no, I'm not. It's the only way. Not me, Jack. Jack? What did you call me? Jack. It's a phrase. You want to know what? You don't look pretty anymore. Trouble? He wants to go back. What is this? He wants me to go back with him to testify. I know you. I know him, Roberta. He's the fellow who was talking to you at the bar when I came back from... I know you. Oh? What's going on here? What do you mean, what's going on here? What does this chap mean when he says, what's going on here, Bobby? Bobby? He calls me that. You didn't want to, but he does. All the time. You please get out of my car. Uh, okay. Uh, don't struggle with me, fella, because... Uh, Bobby, make him let go of the steering wheel. Okay. No! No, come on out here. <laughs> oh! Something's funny. Very, very funny. The whole thing, the back road and Roberta... <laughs> Now, that was the first time in my whole life I'd ever been knocked unconscious by another fella. I didn't see him hit me. Whether or not that would have made a difference, I don't know. I've been called agile. I might have ducked or something. And I don't remember anything when I was out. Spinning wheels of color and voices and rockets bursting and sounds. Nothing. I opened my eyes. I was flat on my back. Up. I got up. Into the car. Behind the wheel. I got into the car and behind the wheel. Roberta was sitting beside me. This is a gun, Joe. That's a gun, Joe. She'll tell you where to drive. You drive her there, you hear? Else she'll shoot you. I will, Joe. Straight down the road. And I'll be following along in my car. Bye. <laughs> You were a liar from the word go, weren't you? Hi, Joe. With a gun. Take your eyes off it. Watch the road. With a gun. Mm-hmm. Where are we going? U.S. Route 101, Joe. Just follow the highway. Look at you. Pretty girl like you, sitting there with a pistol. Straight down the road. To Mexico. I promised you Mexico, didn't I? You think I'm stupid, don't you? No, I don't. I'd rather what's going to happen wouldn't happen to you, Joe. Still, you'd shoot me. Yes, I would. I don't pity you, Roberta. I guess I should, but I just don't. What's going to happen? You killed a man, remember? I'm not so sure. <laughs> what's the matter? Not so sure, he says. The light flashes. What's going to happen? Well, I'll tell you. We're going to drive straight through to Tijuana. You like Tijuana? It's all right. Well, we're going to drive straight through. Then I think Mark... Is he going to kill me? Honey, honey... I don't think he's going to kill me. He's going to use me for a patsy. Patsy? What are you doing with that word? I read. I read plenty. And you are so right. You're going to be a patsy. Dump you in the car below Mexico where the police can find you. By the time they do, they'll have word you're the guy running away from a hit and run outside Redondo. Patsy. That's the word. Joe. I didn't kill that man at all. Joe. You did. I did. Yes, you did. Up ahead, Joe, is the border. Behave. Take your eye off the road for a second. Look at this gun. Now back on the road. Just behave, that's all. I got a story all fixed just in case the border guard. Just behave. Good morning and welcome to Mexico. We hope you enjoy your stay. Uh, where were you born? Me? If you please. Ohio. And uh, you, senor, where were you born? Ah, uh, your father's Cucaracha. Perdona me? Your father's Cucaracha, Jack. I do not understand this belligerent, senor. I wish only to hear which state you were born in. Also is Cumprasita. 
I can deny you permission to make you. Right. It will avail you nothing, madame. This man has insulted me. I suggest... Get him suggesting. You want a suggestion, Jack? The guy in that car driving up. Talk to him. God, my friend here is upset. The, sun, the guy driving know? up. He's the boss of an international smuggling ring. Smuggling? Ring. We'll turn back, guard. My friend... Right there, guard. He... He's packing 200 grand in his suitcase. That fellow there in the gray sedan. Suitcase full of money. Very big smuggler. In, in the gray sedan? The one I'm pointing to. The gray sedan. The fellow's turning around. Oh, yes, I see. Senor! That's the fella. Senor! Wait, I wish you'd get him! you will get him! Will you accept the charges? He's in Mexico. Tijuana. Put him on. Go ahead, sir. Hello, Hazel. I've been told you're in Mexico, Joe. Yes, Hazel, I am. Please tell me why. Will you listen? Of course I'll listen. I thought I had murdered somebody. Murdered somebody? Hit and run. It's the same thing. It is. But Roberta and Mart really did it. Beat up a friend for the money he had that he'd won in Vegas, and I was kidnapped, Hazel. He tried to get away, but the border guards grabbed him, and they found nearly $10,000 in his suitcase. Boy, was I surprised. They got Roberta when she tried... Hazel, are you there? Who kidnapped you, Joe? Roberta and Mart, but it's all right. I tricked them at the border. Roberta had a gun on me, but I... Hazel? Hazel? Oh. Suspense, in which Kathy and Elliot Lewis were starred in Run, Sheep, Run. What's your definition of the criminal type? Have you ever looked at a man or woman and decided, inwardly we hope, that person is the criminal type? If so, you'll be fascinated by what befalls Casey, crime photographer, tomorrow night when he gets involved in a case he blithely labeled the criminal type. Surprise follows surprise, thrill follows thrill when CBS Radio's crime photographer takes his latest case. Tomorrow night on most of these same stations. Next week, the story of a man no one believed even when he confessed to a murder. Anthony Ellis will be starred in his own adaptation of Elizabeth Bowen's Telling. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Run, Sheep, Run was written for suspense by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. Featured in tonight's cast were Irene Tedro, Mary Lansing, Tony Barrett, and Jack Crucian. And remember, next week, Anthony Ellis' adaptation of Elizabeth Bowen's story, Telling. You can join the FBI in peace and war Wednesdays on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>